Howdy everybody, Menopause Taylor here, providing you with everything you need to know to manage your menopause your way. You have tuned in to video number 205, which means I have delivered 204 videos that you need to watch before you're ready to watch this one. And that's because this is no ordinary YouTube channel. This channel is a real education. I'm a real school lover <laughs> and I'm a pedantic, neurotic, anally organized gynecologic surgeon. And as an educator, everything that's new has to build on the last thing. And when it does, you have revelation after revelation that clarifies all your misconceptions. You discover that everything makes perfect sense. And that's what gives you the power to manage your menopause your way. Anything you learn out of order just serves as a standalone soundbite. And it either confuses you more or doesn't enable you to connect all the dots. That's why I continually harp on you to watch my videos in order. So when I'm 100 years old, I'll still be making these videos for you. <laughs> and I'll say, this is video 3000 and you need to start with the very first one, dearie, and watch them all in order. <laughs> I'll never stop telling you that. <laughs> so we are in the middle of a unit on osteoporosis. In my book, whether you have the first edition or the second edition, the entirety of chapter 29 is osteoporosis. And today's topic is the section entitled Guidelines for Bone Density Testing. I've already taught you that when you lose your estrogen at postmenopause, you also lose bone. That's what osteoporosis is, bone loss. But you don't know you're losing bone because there are no symptoms. Unfortunately, most women discover that they have osteoporosis when they fracture a bone doing something that would never fracture a bone under normal circumstances. So last week, I presented the various bone density machines that are available for measuring how much bone you have. And you learned that there is really only one that constitutes the gold standard. It's the central DEXA machine. Central means that it measures bones that are centralized on your body, namely your spine and hip. And these are the two most common sites of fractures. DEXA, D-E-X-A, is an acronym for dual energy x-ray absorptiometry. The central DEXA test is what you need in order to tell you that you have bone loss before it's too late and you sustain a fracture. So today, it's time to talk about the guidelines for getting your central DEXA test. Now, you've seen that guidelines are very important to your health in general and to your menopause management in particular. So if you're wondering why you need to worry about the guidelines or need to know about the guidelines, it's because they can be the difference in whether or not you sustain a fracture. The term guidelines for bone density testing refers to who should get a bone density test and when. Since you already know a lot about osteoporosis, what would you expect in a set of guidelines for bone density testing? Any ideas? See if you can answer this quiz question. It'll help orient you to our discussion. In which of the following situations is bone density testing recommended in every set of guidelines by every organization that makes them? A, all women at age 50 or when they become postmenopausal. B, all women younger than age 50 who are prematurely postmenopausal. C, 
all women younger than age 50 who have premature ovarian failure. D, all women age 55, even if they have not yet become postmenopausal. E, all women who become postmenopausal at any age and cannot take HRT. F, all of the above. G, none of the above. H, B, C, and D above. I, D, and E above. J, A, and E above. Which of those would make the most sense to you, given what I've already taught you about osteoporosis? Which would serve to diagnose osteoporosis the best when it's still early enough to prevent a fracture? Here's the question again with the answer in bold. Can you believe it? Isn't that enough to make you fracture a bone just freaking out about it? Well, this is why you need to know the guidelines. They are not what you would expect them to be. So let's address this by starting with the purpose of guidelines. I've taught you about guidelines before, but in the general sense. That was video tutorial 91. Today, I'll apply everything specifically to the guidelines for bone density testing. The first thing to understand is that there isn't just one set of guidelines for bone density testing. There are many different organizations evolved, involved with osteoporosis, and they all have their own guidelines. There's the International Society for Clinical Densitometry, or ISCD, the International Menopause Society, or IMS, the National Osteoporosis Foundation, or NOF, the North American Menopause Society, or NAMS, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, or ACOG, the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, AACE, and the United States Preventive Services Task Force, USPST. And not only do each of these organizations have different guidelines, they all change them from time to time. What this means is that there is not one single set of guidelines that is universally accepted by all doctors or all insurance plans or all healthcare organizations. It's up to you to know that they differ and that your bone health may be at risk simply because of the differing guidelines. The next thing to understand is that all guidelines are economic guidelines. The word economic means that they are about money. There is only so much money that can be dedicated to any one test. So the guidelines for bone density testing dictate how much money can be spent on bone density testing. Imagine a group of people from any one of these organizations sitting around a table and on the table there's a big pile of money. Their job is to decide how to spend that money. So economic guidelines seek to spend the money in the most efficient manner. There is no such thing as a set of guidelines that is unconstrained by money. But that's not all. No set of guidelines considers how to spend money on you as an individual. All guidelines focus on the entire population. In essence, all guideline makers are asking, how many people are we willing to screen in order to diagnose osteoporosis? And the question that goes hand in hand with that question is, how many people are we willing to skip in order to save money? So you have to understand that when your doctor or your insurance company or your medical organization says that they are following the guidelines for bone density testing. They are talking about one set of guidelines from one of these organizations in terms of the 
economics of spending the money to test for bone density on the entire population. In other words, no one is thinking about you. You have to think about you. Let me give you some of the facts about the various guidelines so that you can see how well they do or do not serve you. First, we'll address something called routine screening. Now, routine screening is just what it implies. It's the use of bone density testing for everyone who doesn't qualify for some other reason. It's like the routine screening for how often you need a pap smear or a mammogram or a vaccination. It's the norm. But not all organizations that create guidelines define routine screening similarly. This is one of the problems with bone density guidelines. You never know which guidelines your doctor or insurance or medical organization follows. Routine screening refers to the most basic aspect of any set of guidelines. In the case of screening for bone density, guess what age is designated for routine screening? In other words, at what age should you get your very first bone density test according to the guidelines? Now, when answering this question, you would want to take into account everything I've already taught you about osteoporosis. This includes all of the following. Bone loss begins when you lose your estrogen at about the age of 50. And you lose a whopping 2% two, 2 of your bone each year in the first five years of postmenopause, followed by a loss of 1% every year thereafter. And there are no symptoms to warn you that you have osteoporosis, so the only thing you have to rely on is a bone density test. Given all of that, at what age would it make sense to have your first bone density test as a matter of routine? Oh, how I wish I could hear your guesses. I'm going to bet that you answered somewhere in the ballpark of age 50, right? That seems logical, doesn't it? Well, surprise, surprise. That is not the age of the guidelines that are designated for routine first bone density testing. Not for any of them. Instead, it's 65. 65! Can you believe it? Let's see. By the age of 65, you could have lost 2% of your bone per year for 5 years. That's 10%. And 1% of your bone each year for the next 15 years. That's another 15%. So using the age of 65 as the age for routine first bone density testing means that you may very well have already lost a full 25% of your bone. Remember, these are economic and population-wide guidelines. So using the age of 65 really means that these organizations are saying, it's worth saving the money we'll save, even at the expense of an awful lot of women having full-blown osteoporosis by the time they get their very first bone density test. And my question to you is, are their savings worth it to you? So this routine guideline for when you should get your first bone density test essentially converts it from a tool to prevent development of osteoporosis into one that diagnoses it very late. Many women sustain fractures long before they ever reach the age of 65 and have their first bone density test. So my message to you is this, forget the guidelines. Do what makes sense to you. Of course, realize that the guidelines are tied to what your insurance will pay for. So don't be a bit surprised if your doctor says your insurance won't pay for a bone density test until you're 65. If that's the case, I sure hope that the response, I'll pay for it, 
rolls off your tongue automatically. Learn how to say, I'll pay for it myself. I will never understand why people will pay for vitamins, minerals, supplements, Botox, cosmetics, tanning machines, plastic surgery, but they won't pay for their medical tests that could save their lives. Do you recall video 125 when I talked about health care versus disease care? What I told you then is that our so-called health care system is really a disease care system. Medical doctors are trained to fix you once you're broken. We are repairmen. We receive no education on how to keep you healthy. That's an entirely different industry. It's the wellness industry. So what you have to realize about these guidelines for bone density testing is that they are made by people in the disease care industry whose sole focus is on fixing things once they're broken. So the timing of the first bone density test according to these guidelines is designed to detect those people who need fixing because they are already broken. Or as they say in Texas, fixin'. <laughs> They are not designed by the wellness industry, which would time them earlier before you're broken. That would constitute prevention. But the wellness industry doesn't have any guidelines for any testing because they are not trained in disease. So neither industry is what it should be. Neither one serves your needs well. There's a whole lot in between prevention and fixin'. That's why I teach you all these things. I want you to learn how to keep yourself in good health. So if your goal is to diagnose bone loss before you have osteoporosis, then do not wait until you're 65 to get your first bone density test. And I'll be presenting all sorts of ways that you can prevent further bone loss. By waiting until age 65, you will be using your bone density test to determine treatment needs. It will be long past the time when you could have prevented the bone loss in the first place. So think of it like this. An early bone density test when you start postmenopause serves to diagnose bone loss before you have osteoporosis. A late bone density test at age 65 serves to diagnose osteoporosis when it's already advanced. Another way to look at it is like this. An early bone density test at the time of postmenopause enables you to prevent osteoporosis. A late bone density test at the age of 65 only enables you to treat already existing osteoporosis. So the most logical thing to do is get your first bone density test when you first become postmenopausal. It'll serve as a baseline and you'll be able to compare all future bone density tests to that first one. And if you get your bone density test on a regular basis of every one, two, or three years, you'll diagnose bone loss early. And when you diagnose bone loss early, you can actually replace that lost bone. Now, in addition to the routine guidelines for your first bone density test, all guidelines have other parameters that warrant bone density testing. They vary from organization to organization, but they always go back to at least some of those risk factors I presented to you in video 203 on how to know if you're at risk for osteoporosis. Here's that list again. So all the guidelines list other circumstances that warrant a bone density test. They include things like having had a previous fracture. Really? Doesn't it seem backward to cite a previous fracture as a reason to get a bone density test earlier than age 65 instead of just recommending them earlier in the first place? Some cite things like recommending a bone density test in a woman younger than 65 if they have a fracture risk equal to or greater than
than that of a 65-year-old with no additional risk factors. But again, by age 65, your age alone puts you at high risk. And what about the frequency of bone density testing? For frequency of bone density testing, most of the guidelines don't even designate how often you should repeat it. But those that do recommend having it repeated only about every five years or so. That recommendation is also not in your best interest. If you want to catch bone loss early enough to do something about it, you'll need to get a bone density test every year or two. And again, you might have to pay for it. And as I mentioned in the last video, be sure to use the same bone density machine each time. That will improve the accuracy of your results. So the guidelines for bone density are all about fixin' rather than prevention. And while they say fixin' to do something in Texas, I've never heard that expression anywhere else. Prevention is what you would get if the medical industry were a healthcare industry interested in keeping you well. Fixin' is what you get from a medical industry that's interested in fixing you once you're broken. And you can't fix to prevent something, even in Texas. <laughs> you know, they have their own vernacular in Texas for a lot of things. <laughs> for instance, did you know that the plural of you is not just you in Texas? No, if you're a Texan, the plural of you is you all. But you don't say it like that. You say y'all. <laughs> but get this, there's even a pluralized form of the already plural y'all in Texas. <laughs> the plural of y'all is all y'all. <laughs> the point is that these bone density guidelines are all focused on the fixin' of your osteoporosis, not the prevention of your osteoporosis. Okay, so the summary for today is that guidelines for bone density testing are woefully inadequate for diagnosing nosing osteoporosis at an early stage. Therefore, you need to get your first bone density test when you first become postmenopausal, even if you have to pay for it yourself. And then you need to get one every year or two after that to detect bone loss early enough to stop it. I don't mean to be brutal, but no one else is gonna teach you this stuff. You have to know how the system works in order to take good care of yourself. In my opinion, guidelines are supposed to be paths to good health, not roads to doom and gloom. And you'll hear me say many times that no one is ever going to take care of you as well as you can take care of yourself. Of course, I'll help you. If you need my assistance, schedule a consultation with me at menopausetaylor.me and come back in one week when I'll teach you how to interpret the results of your bone density test. That is fraught with all sorts of camouflage and ways to mislead you too. And I won't let anyone dupe you. Subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll see you next week. Bye! <music>